Welcome to the January 25th, 2021 Advance Report for McGowan Group clients and NetworthRadio.com listeners. I'm Spencer McGowan, your financial weatherman and president of McGowan Group Asset Management for your weekly fast-paced tour of the global financial markets. The longer play version of the program is actually available on Apple Podcasts without any disruptions. So if you go to Apple Podcasts, just type in Net Worth Radio. It'll come right up. You can subscribe. And that way, it's easy to go in and get the commercial-free long play program as well. This graphic tour of the financial markets actually begins with a five-year Dow chart. And you can see the Dow starting at 15,005, now about double that, just over 31,000 after this week. You can see the notable corrections. 2018, we actually had a brief bear market cycle. Here, we had the pandemic and the recovery from the pandemic. Is it too far too fast? And that's going to be the big question because we've been saying that the market could actually be range bound. Uh, this was the first time we hit near 30,000. Uh, we were range bound all during this period. Not much return until this rally in 2019. And so those range bound periods can be pretty disturbing if you're equity based or equity index based. If you're getting yield, you'll tend to be more patient, reinvest and find some bargains with that excess cash flow. So we're going to run through a few of the charts and graphs that tell us where we are in the recovery from the pandemic. And congratulations, Texas. We crossed one million vaccines, according to Governor Abbott. And that's the highest percentage of any state. Almost three and a half percent of Texans vaccinated now. It puts us on track to reach that theoretical herd immunity faster than the rest of the nation. Projected for the rest of the nation July 13th, Texas likely to be a couple of months sooner uh, because we did a better job of rolling out the vaccines. This is the year to date performance from the different sectors in the S&P 500. S&P 500 uh, overall right now uh, about one to two percent in gains so far this year. The leading sector is energy up 10 percent for the year. You can see that here a little retraction this last week. Uh, the healthcare sector has pulled ahead. Healthcare is actually uh, the uh, the four percent gain you see right here, and that's that's one of the leading sectors. Consumer discretionary also a sign that things are working. The worst is consumer staples, which had done very well as a defensive play in the pandemic for certain equity allocations. Now we have 68 of 500 companies reporting fourth quarter profits so far. What have we learned? Well, sales growth above the fourth quarter of 2019. What's that pre-pandemic? Well, slightly above, about two thirds of a percent above sales of the fourth quarter of 2019. That looks like a recovery. And earnings growth, well, 0.23%, not quite a quarter of a percent, barely above pre-pandemic levels, but that's recovery in terms of corporate profits. Lower labor costs, real estate costs coming down, those are some of the key numbers. Yes, and we had some cheap energy supply during the pandemic, but companies by and large managed well, and the survivors, of course, like in the restaurant industry, starting to make more money, like Brinker International, hitting uh, $60 this week. The low was eight during the pandemic. I've got some more Dallas companies coming up just for fun on year-to-date performance. All right, GDP growth. How's the economy compared to where it was? We just looked at corporate profits. Well, of course, GDP went down 31% preceded by 5%. Those are annualized numbers, then a 33% gain annualized. This quarter's projected at 4%. Comes out this next week, we'll cover what it means. Atlanta Fed said that could have been as high as 11% because there were additional shutdowns in California and New York, of course. Well, that may be a little less. Here, you've got growth for next year projected at about four. So this year's probably gonna come in at a minus four for the whole year. Not bad for a recession year, thanks to stimulus and quick monetary action. 
Uh, there'll probably be a hangover from that in 2022, and we'll, we'll get more into muted growth. The Biden administration this week put out 17 executive orders and hinted at others that are coming out. TransCanada pipeline canceled. Well, what does that mean? The Gulf Coast of Texas, probably the most astute export facility when it comes to refining. Uh, that was supply that for the refining mixes that would have been beneficial. Uh, that is actually 30,000 jobs gone like that. So in the case of the hostile policies towards energy, why would S&P Energy be the number one performing sector when Obama took office? Lots of executive orders, lots of regulations, restricting supply and a recovery, and oil went from 30 to 107 in less than two years. The policies of the Biden administration, yes, will be more health care spending. This is actually a five-year chart for the health care index. You can see the pandemic, the recovery, health care being one of the leading sectors. The medical dividend technology companies way underpriced compared to traditional technologies, in many cases with better growth rates projected. So that's one sector that works. One of the other policies, if we look at two policies coming up in the new administration, higher taxes, especially higher corporate taxes, that could send the Dow into a 10% correction at some point this year. More regulation, that's less productivity. And what happened during the Obama administration was a recovery at just 1% GDP growth as an average. So it, it mutes the GDP growth forecast. This is floor, that is infrastructure. Uh, they do uh, primarily a lot of energy, but also the infrastructure and engineering projects around the world, the $4 trillion infrastructure package, plus the recovery in energy, likely full demand recovered by the third quarter, has a nice 25% gain for floor. This is just year to date, and you can see that percentage at 20%, the stock hit 25. GameStop, what, what happened here? It's up 142% so far this year. That's called a short squeeze. The company obviously was on the ropes, the gaming retailer based in Grapevine, Texas, and uh, the short interest was huge, meaning people had borrowed the stock, betting they wouldn't make it through the pandemic. They got a capital infusion, and those people have to buy those shares back uh, because they borrowed them, and that's called a short squeeze. So that's the uh, top performing North Texas based company year to date. This is ExxonMobil, uh, the, the gain, or tenant healthcare, excuse me, healthcare sector, it was down a couple percent. Now it's up 25%, tenant healthcare being one of the top performers in the whole healthcare sector. And now here's ExxonMobil, uh, gain this year about 15%, uh, that stock rallying and you can see that uh, here on this chart as well. So wanted to give you a few high points from North Texas shareholders and also a read on what's going forward. The long play program covers more about the 17 executive orders and policy changes, but also on specific strategy and asset classes that we're using in the models here at McGowan Group Asset Management. Come see us by Zoom or at the Crescent Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe and the Apple podcast for the more extended program. Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel. I'm Spencer McGowan, President of McGowan Group, your financial weatherman. We sponsor each week NetworthRadio.com broadcast that has the charts and graphs, many of which you saw today. We also sponsor this YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe for fast breaking news, an alert when we post something in a market condition that may have changed. Our goal is to help you as an investor make the right decisions at the right time. And that's part of what this YouTube channel is about as well as NetworthRadio.com. I am well served with a team of 10 people including myself and that team that cares is actually made up of people who devoted to your net profits and your success as well as excellence in service. If you want an educational experience to follow this up, 
Get to NetWorthRadio.com, TheMcGowanGroup.com. Right here, we disclose our net client experience all the way back to 2001. What that includes, the bear market cycles of 02, 08, 2018, and the recoveries through the most recent quarter. That is true education of investors and exactly how our clients have done disclosed right here. Further disclosures, value at risk of loss. Yes, investments are going to fluctuate. That's part of the reason for this broadcast and that can actually work to your advantage. We'll build that into your plan. So I urge you to go to NetWorthRadio.com, fill out the preliminary client questionnaire, a free one-hour brainstorming session by phone or at the Crescent in Dallas, and we will map out a multi-year plan for you and your family that's appropriate. Just because we talk about a security on this broadcast or any securities doesn't make it a recommendation for your portfolio until you have that written plan. Thank you for tuning in today and we'll be back next week as your financial weatherman.